my name's Ketavon. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm going to be doing the in and out book tag. I was tagged by Sandy from Miss Reads a Lot. Uh, thank you so much for the tag. And um, we actually met up very recently in Paris. She came to visit on vacation and, and we ended up going book shopping together. And actually we talked about a couple of these things um, on this list before I even knew I was tagged in it. So it's kind of funny. But um, I'll just dive right in. They're the 26 prompts, but they're very quick. And um, it's just like a fun little bookish uh, list of things, whether or not you agree with them. So number one, reading the last page first. Uh, no, out. <laughs> you know, when Harry says that and when Harry met Sally, that's supposed to be like a sign that he's like incredibly depressed and needs help, not something you should be doing. <laughs> just my opinion. Uh, number two, enemies to lovers. Uh, as much as I hate to, I hate it theoretically, I, I do love it. I, I I love it. I'm not a big romance reader, but that is one of the tropes that I have no problem diving into. So I guess I'm going to go for in. Number three, dream sequences. Generally out. Um, I, have I read a good dream sequence that I really thought like nailed it and like, and like did everything it wanted to do? No. So until I come across some better executed ones, it's going to be an out for me. Uh, number four, love triangles. Okay, yeah, no, like complete out. Uh, as a polyamorous person, they're they're boring. Like it's just like yeah, no. <laughs> um, I will say though that I I do and did I still do love Bridges of Madison County because that is like the only love triangle I felt that actually had real meaning and real power behind it, not just oh this sucks I have to choose <laughs> so um all right number five cracked spines I don't do it on purpose I don't care if a book has a cracked spine like I'll buy a used book with a cracked spine so but I do try to avoid a cracked spine you know I do the thing where you like open the book carefully to, to avoid cracked spines but I also don't beat myself up if it happens so I guess I'll go within so I, I don't know how which side of the coin I fall on that but number six back to my small town so again just like enemies to lovers I, I hate to love it but I do I read a really interesting article about how those like hallmark tropes of like oh you'll go back to the small town and you'll find true love is like fascist propaganda which like I completely agree with it is fascist propaganda like it's only where you come from where you'll be able to find happiness and the big city you'll never be able to find people that understand the real you it's like of course that yes that is fascist propaganda I still love reading it. It's, I mean, to me, romance is like more akin to fantasy than fantasy is sometimes. And I just, I love, I love a good small town, like, oh, finding true love when I'm in the mood for it. So I guess for me, it's an in. Seven, monsters are real people. In, of course, like, that is definitely reality, right? Like, monsters aren't just magical monsters that came out of nowhere. They came from something, whether they're like, fantasy monsters but more assault along the lines of bad guys like bad guys are of course real people that become bad for a reason uh and i think books that explore that a plus so in uh number eight no paragraph breaks i don't love it but it doesn't put me off a book so i guess i'll say in number nine multi-generational sagas this is one i spoke about with sandy i have read a couple and enjoyed them but i'm just so hesitant like the description or synopsis of a multi-generational saga like for some people they're like that's all they need to know and they'll read the book and for me that's like it means nothing like what does that mean it's like okay there's multiple generations in the book but like what's the book actually about i'm gonna say out because i feel like publishers use that as a shorthand for like this can be a really good literary fiction book and for me i need more i need like to know what the book's about other than like family secrets and and things being uncovered and like learning about themselves like, yes like every book has those things I need more. So number 10, rereading. In, but I don't do it as much as I want to. So I have a list of books that I want to reread. Do I actually reread them very often? No, but I will one day. So I'm, I'm going to say in. Uh, number 11, artificial intelligence. I'm not sure what this means. I'm guessing like as a theme or like explored in the book. And I don't think I've read a book that focuses on that necessarily but I guess I'll say in because I don't I'm not opposed to it like exploring those ideas for sure uh number 12 drop caps in that they're fine I feel like it's a very like weird thing to be out about <laughs> whatever it's an aesthetic choice 
13 happy endings um in uh like i have no problem with a happy ending do i prefer real slash sad endings yeah, but it's not like I think happy endings are cheesier, or trite, or contrived necessarily. So I, I enjoy that. Number 14, plot points that only converge at the end. In, I love that. Um, as long as it's done well, and as long as, you know, it all actually comes together, I, I love that when you're like very confused with the majority of the book and then all of a sudden everything's making sense. I love it. Number 15, a detailed magic system. That's a hard out for me. Um, this is the main reason I don't enjoy fantasy. Uh, I, I hate having to relearn the, the rules of the world and, and a detailed magic system is just one part of a world so having it be detailed and like super complex is not for me for sure. Uh, number 17, unreliable narrators. Love them. I mean honestly how can we consider any narrator truly reliable? Like every everybody has <laughs> their own misconceptions and perceptions of the world so yeah I love them. Number 18, evil protagonists. Yeah, of course, it makes makes it real, makes it realistic, and makes it more fun, more more interesting, for sure. Number 19, the chosen one. Out. I hate this. I hate this is the main reason I hated Dune so much. I, there were many reasons I didn't like Dune, but but I was like, what? So he's just like randomly this super powerful person. He did nothing for this to happen. Maybe this is also why I'm not into Harry Potter at all. Like, just like, okay, this thing happened to him and now he's powerful. Like, it makes no sense. Make it make sense. <laughs> um, 20, when the protagonist dies. Um, in, yeah, why not? I mean, like, I guess people get attached to characters and they don't like when someone they care about in a book dies, but if it works and if that's sending the message the author wants to send, then yeah, I'm all for it. Uh, number 21, really long chapters. I gotta say, out. Um, it won't make me not pick up a book, but I really prefer shorter chapters or at least like regular sized chapters. The super long chapters are just like, ugh, not, not the best. I don't love that. Number 22, French flaps. So I actually, only on booktube did I learn that that actually has a name. Do I have a book with me that has French flaps? Oh yeah, I guess it's a French book, so it makes sense. Um, yeah, these are French flaps. Um, I did not think these were so divisive. I actually thought it was a cheap way to print the paperback in the same layout as a hardcover, but apparently not. Apparently there's a whole reason behind it. I just, I kind of thought them as bookmarks. Um, I don't know, in? <laughs> they're not great for like being your only bookmark, but they're fine, like no problem. <laughs> mm -mm 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 -mm. Deckled Edges. So this one I actually have to say out. Um, I think it's fun to have a, you know, a Deckled Edge book, but actually it's really annoying to read. And it's kind of like artificial because I don't, like the reason why Deckled Edges are a thing is because that's how printmakers and bookmakers had to make books because they couldn't cut things easily. So now it feels like when books are printed with Deckled Edges, it's like the bookmaker is doing extra work just to make it look old fashioned when in reality it would be cheaper and easier to just cut it like a normal book. I think, if, if I'm wrong about that aspect of publishing, please correct me, but I really think it's just them spending more money and time to make it feel like a vintage book when it's not. <laughs> so it's like that faux vintage look that I'm just like, why? <laughs> Don't get it. Uh, number 24, signed copies by the author. Um, I have one uh, signed book by the author, uh, Pigtails by Marie Derisek. I, I bought it at a used bookstore for five euro, did not spend a lot of money on it, but I have it. Would I ever like spend any money, like any, any, anything more than the price of a new book to specifically get a signed copy of a book I loved? Probably not. Um, it, it just doesn't seem worth it. If I met the author somehow, I would have them sign my book, but I wouldn't pay for it. So I guess it's an in but with the caveat of zero money spent in that goal and number 25 dog earring pages i gotta say in on this one um i don't do it often if i have a bookmark handy i will use the bookmark if i have anything that can be used as a bookmark handy i will use that receipts my phone another book um a piece of cloth <laughs> um anything i will use it but sometimes you really just don't have any other thing and it is what it is and I dog ear the page and it, you know also dog ear like sometimes I'll be reading a book um, and want to like annotate something but I don't have a pen and I don't have any sticky notes 
to like tab it with and there's no other way to remember what page it was because I'm continuing in the book so I'll just dog ear that page to remember to go back and look for whatever I wanted to annotate. It is what it is. Books are meant to be used in love, guys. Sorry. Like, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. Number 26. Chapter titles instead of numbers. Sure. Uh, I don't need a number to tell me I'm going along. The page count will do just fine. And chapter titles, I think, are more fun because then you kind of get an idea of what's to be expected in the chapter. So, yeah, I'm all for that. So that was number 26. Thank you so much, Sandy, for tagging me. It was super fun to sort of like quickly go through all these different little bookish debates and give my opinions on them. Um, I don't have anyone specific in mind to tag. So again, feel free to be tagged if you, if you want to do this yourself. And until next time, bye.